Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of cosquetamine. This work was published in the European Journal of Organic Chemistry by the Romero Ibanez and Sartillo Piscal groups. Cosquetamine was first isolated in 1982 by Irikawa et al. from the fruit of Clerodendrum trichotomo. Since its initial isolation, it has also been found in Cuscuta chinensis, Ligusticum chongqing, and Cuscuta auralis. However, there are discrepancies in the characterization data and optical rotations for the compounds isolated, and this has led to uncertainty about the true stereochemical structure of cuscutamine. Cuscutamine is quite a simple molecule, and there have been many effective strategies developed for the synthesis of these indole-type alkaloids. However, this synthetic route is quite interesting, as it utilizes a transition metal-free deconstructive lactamization to construct one of the rings present in the molecule. To synthesize the precursor for this lactamization, they started with L-tryptophan, which was chlorinated using thionyl chloride. In this reaction, an oxygen of the carboxylic acid acts as a nucleophile and attacks thionyl chloride, breaking one of the sulfur-chlorine bonds. This activated acid is then attacked by the chloride, forming a tetrahedral intermediate, which decomposes forming an acyl chloride. This was then directly reacted with methanol to form a methyl ester in a quantitative yield. Taking this forward, they then carried out a pictet spengler reaction. In this reaction, they used dihydropyran instead of the more common methods which use an aldehyde. Protonation of DHP with sulfuric acid generates an oxonium electrophile which is attacked by the amine, forming a hemiaminal intermediate. The oxygen of this hemiaminal is then protonated, and then the carbon oxygen bond breaks to form an aminium ion. This aminium ion is attacked by the two position of the indole, and then a proton is lost to restore the neutral charge and complete the reaction in a 72% yield with a 2 to 1 dr. This mixture of isomers was not separated and was mesylated using mesyl chloride, DMAP, and triethylamine. With this leaving group now installed, the secondary amine acted as a nucleophile and a 6 exotrig cyclization occurred, forming a new 6 membered ring in a 75% yield. At this point, the two isomers could be separated and both were reacted separately with Bakken hydride to protect the indole nitrogen. With this in hand, they could then carry out the deconstructive lactamization. In this reaction, Tempo is first oxidized by sodium chloride to form an oxopapyridinium species. This is able to abstract a hydride from a carbon adjacent to the tertiary amine, and the resulting aminium species then forms an enamine, which attacks another equivalent of the tetramethyl oxopapyridinium. The aminium intermediate that is formed by this step is then attacked by sodium chloride, and an oxidation to form a lactam can then occur in a mechanism similar to that of the pinnock oxidation. This compound was then purified and reacted with MCPBA to oxidize the nitrogen of the tetramethylpapyridine ring. This abstracts a proton and is eliminated, forming a 1,2 dicarbonyl species. This then reacts with another equivalent of MCPBA to carry out a bayer villager type oxidation. The carbonyl is first protonated and the peroxide then acts as a nucleophile. This forms a tetrahedral intermediate that can undergo a rearrangement to form an n carboxyanhydride species. This is quite unstable and undergoes decarboxylation to form the five-membered lactam ring. While this reaction worked with both isomers, there was a significant difference in the yields obtained. This can be explained by looking at the steric hindrance around the oxidizable hydrogen atoms. In the 11S isomer, one of the protons on carbon-4 is shielded by the methyl ester, while in the 11R isomer, both protons on carbon-4 are free to react, and as a result, generated a much higher yield than the 11S isomer. With this ring now formed, the compounds could be deprotected using lithium hydroxide and TFA dimethyl sulfide. This produced the 11S 13R isomer in an 83% yield. However, when this sequence was carried out on the 11R isomer, a pimerization of carbon-13 was observed. Computational studies suggest that there is steric hindrance that destabilizes the 11S, 13S product, making it more favorable to epimerize under base conditions. Nevertheless, 
the optical rotation data obtained from the two isomers produced support data that was previously generated by Jung et al., which suggested that earlier stereochemical assignment of these compounds was incorrect. Well, that's everything for this week. In the next video, we will look at the total synthesis of a cell of Tucson C.